In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the graphs of the sine and cosine functions in degrees. Uh, there's a couple different ways, actually there's three I know of, uh, to measure degrees, measure angles, sorry. Uh, degrees is one. Uh, radians is another very common one, especially in getting into higher mathematics. And then there's also gradients too that I know of, but I have never ever seen it used. Uh, the difference between degrees and radians is in degrees, um, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So the definition of a degree is it's 1 360th of a circle. Uh, gradients, there's 400 gradients in a circle. Uh, so a gradient is 1 400th of a circle. And actually the nice thing about gradients does, then is in a quadrant, uh, like to rotate from here to here, uh, like a quarter of a circle, there's 90 degrees, but there would be 100 gradients. So actually, that's kind of nice in a way um, to be able to work with it instead of degrees, because we're, our number system is base 10 instead of base, well, 60. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that's another point. So um, we're going to start filling in this table here. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm using... Um, uh, multiples to 30. I could use other angles too. I mean, if I want to do like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, I could do that. Um, my blo my blocks here, that's every block is actually 15 degrees. So that's 15, that would be 30. Uh, 45, that'd be 60. So we're actually graphing for every second one. So let's start filling out the table here. And again, make sure your degrees in, is, or your calculator is in degrees, not radians for this one. So uh, the sine of 0 we'll start with. Uh, the sine is 0 is 0, so we're going to put a 0 there. And then I want to go 30 degrees next. So 30 is going to be 0. 0.5. And then we're going to do 60. So now I'm going to round that to 0. 0.87. Uh, so it's a little less than 0. 0.9. If you round to 0. 0.9, it's still going to be pretty close. You're still going to be see pretty much exactly what we want to see. So let's uh, so zero here, 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.87. Bring the calculator back, and then we want to do 90. So I'm just going to edit this. Put 90. Uh, sine of 90 is one, and then we want to go to 120. And actually, if I don't close the bracket, the calculator is still going to evaluate that properly because it's programmed that way. Um, I'm just going to be doing this. I'm just trying to show proper mathematical form. That's why I'm closing the brackets here. So sine of one, so 90 is one. This is going to be uh, 0.866. The 150 is 0.5. And then let's do 180. Okay. So remember, that's going to be a one there. So back down is zero. Excuse me, I'm coughing here. So that's going to be 1, 0 0.87, 0 0.5. We just did zero. Now we want to go to 210. 210. So the 210 is going to be negative 0.5. And then my 240 is next. So that will be negative 0.87. And let's go to 270 is down to negative 1. So that one's going to be negative 1. So negative 0.5, negative 0.87, negative 1, those three. And then we'll do the last three. So I'm going to do 300 next. 300. So that's going to be negative 0.87. 330 is negative 0.5. And 360, you might guess, is back to zero. So negative 0.87, negative 0.5, zero. Now I'm going to do the cosine table before I start graphing too, so I just want to complete the table. So cos zero is one. So that's going to start with a one uh, function value of one there. And let's do 30 next. So that's going to be 0.87 and then we'll do 60. That's going to be point. Uh, that's going to be point 0.5. So 1.87 and 0.5. 1. 0.87 and 0.5. Point 0.5. Now we'll do 90. I'm just doing three at a time, so you can see them all in the calculator at once. So there's the 90. And then we'll do 120 next. 120. 
close my brackets because I want to show good mathematical form and the 150 so uh, this is going to be 0 uh, this can be negative 0.5 here for the 120 and then this is going to be negative 0.87 and I, actually I think I'll do the 150 here as well so remember uh, the 90 uh, is the 0 here I guess you're still going to be able to see that anyway yeah so that's the 0 for the 90 uh, negative 0.5 uh, the 150 is negative 0.87 and uh, the one oh I just did the 150 again didn't I okay well let's uh, stop here and put the in the numbers we just had I, I did the 150 twice here so yeah let's change that to 180 there we go so the 180 is going to be negative 1 negative 1 there and uh, so now I want to go to 210 Whoops, 210. So uh, this is going to be negative 0.87. And then 240. So that's going to be negative 0.5. And the 270 is going to be uh, 0. So negative 0.87, negative 0.5, and 0. And three more in the 300s 300 so that one 330 so that's going to be 0 0.87 and you might guess that 360 is back to 1 so 0 0.5 0 .8, 0 0.87 and the 1 So now we're going to start graphing them. So 0, 0, so 0, 0 is here. So 30 degrees would go up to 0.5. So remember, that's 15, so that's 30. So we're actually every second block here. We're at 0.5, so we'll put a dot right there. And then above uh, 60, which is here, we're up to 0.87. So just below the 0.9, so about right there. And then at 90 degrees, we're at 1. So above 90, we'll put a dot at 1. And then at uh, 120, we're back down to 0.87, so it uh, will be at the same height as that one. And then at the uh, 150, okay, 150 be right here, we're at 0.5. Whoops, uh, 150 right there, here we go, 0.5. And then 180s, we're at 0. And then at 210, so 210 will be here, or at negative 0.5, so that's going to be right there. 240, it's negative 0.87, so 240 be here, uh, negative 0.87, so that's about right there. And at 270, we're at negative 1, so that'll be right there. So now at 300, uh, 300 degrees, that's 270 right there, so 300 be right here. We're at negative 0.87, that guy right there. And then at 330, we're at negative 0.5, so 330 would be here at negative 0.5. And at 360, we're at 0. So 360, the function value is 0 right there. So if we draw a smooth curve between these, that's what the sine function looks like. That's y equals sine x. Now let's do the uh, cosine. Oh, I clicked and I got the first point. So uh, at 0 degrees, it has a function value of 1. At 30, it's 0.87. So 30 degrees right here, it's uh, 0.87. So that's about right there. And then 60 is 0.5, so 60 is at 0.5, so put a dot there. And at 90, it's down to 0, right there. 120, it's at negative 0.5, so 120 would be here, so negative 0.5, we'll put a dot there. And at 150, it's negative 0.87, so that's 150. Negative 0.87 is about right there. And negative at 240, whoops, I think I... I skipped a couple. That's the one we just did. So at 180, it's at negative 1. So 180 would be negative 1 right there. And then at 210, so 210 would be right here. It's at uh, the negative 0.87. That's that one right there. And we go to 240, it's at negative 0.5. So 240 will be right here. It's at negative 0.5. And then 270, it's at 0. So 270, it's at 0. 300, it's at 0.5. So 300 would be here, it's at 0.5. And 
And then 330, it's 0 0.87. So that would be right about there. And at 360, it's up to 1. So 360, it's at 1. And so if we draw a smooth curve between those, that's what the cosine function looks like. So you can see these are actually periodic functions, and there's a little something I want to do here just to show how they will uh, keep replicating the same shape. So if I were to extend the table, let's say to three more multiples of 30, 394, 24, 50, and evaluate the trig functions for those, uh, so if I did the sine of 390, and then I'll do 420, 420, and then I'll do 450, okay, so 0.5 here, 0.87 here, 1 here, notice it's duplicating the same kinds of values. Uh, for, and actually, so if we graph 390.5, so 390 would be here, that's a, a y value of 0.5. And then 420, which would be up here, it's up to 0.87, so that would be right there. And at 450, it's at 1, so 450 would be here, it's up at 1. And notice, so if we draw those together, see that's duplicating the same kind of shape we had here. So it is going to replicate the same pattern. Now if we do the co same thing for the cosines, let's do... Um, the, uh, actually, yeah, this is the simplest way to do it, probably. If I do replay this, and I just change my sign to a cos. There we go. So there's my cos 390. And now I do cos 420. Right back there, 420. And then my 450. Just edit the 2 to a 5. So uh, this is going to be 0 0.87. 420 gives us 0.5. 450 gives us 0, so that's where I'm going to get those function values from. And so we plot them, 390 is 0.87, so 390 is 0.87. The 420 gives us 0.5, so 420 gives us 0.5. And the 450 is back down to 0, which is going to be right there. And so you see it's just coming in here and duplicating the same kind of shape it did there. So it's just going up, going down, going up going down. So it's going to replicate for higher and higher angles exactly the same shape. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the minimum, maximum value, the highest value, lowest value, the amplitude, I'll discuss that in a minute, and the period, the length of a cycle. So the minimum value is negative 1 for the sine graph. The lowest value it possibly gets here is at negative 1. And the maximum value is positive 1. It's positive 1 there. It would be positive 1 here. Okay, the amplitude is the distance from this middle line. It's called the axis. It's not actually an axis of symmetry. It's an axis in the middle. The amplitude is the distance between here and a max, or between this line and a min, which is one unit. So the amplitude is one. And the period is the length of a cycle. See, this is one full period here. So from zero to 360 is one full cycle. So that's called the length of the period. It's a length of one complete part of the graph before it starts to replicate itself again. So the period is 360 degrees, because after that, you see this part right here is duplicating what we did at the very beginning. Now the cos values, uh, minimum is negative one, the same, and has a maximum value of positive one here, here. Okay, so it has the same min and max, just at different places. Uh, amplitude's still the same. The distance between the middle axis line and a maximum point or the middle axis line and a minimum is still 1. So the amplitude is still 1. And the length of a cycle is three, still 360. Okay, so That's one full cycle to there. And then this would be the start of another cycle, re replicating what we did right here. So that's some of the characteristics of uh, sine and cosine graphs. That's how we get the sinusoidal graphs. That's how you can actually graph them. And we could use, I didn't have to use those angles specifically, like uh, like if I took the sine of, let's see, 45 degrees, for example, okay, I, I could have used other numbers. See, for the sine, okay, 45 degrees, see, that would be right here. See, that point right there is the 0.707 number. Okay, so I, I get other points on the graph. Like if I want to know the you know the cosine, let's say of um, 105 degrees, I choose that because it's it's 15 after um, uh, 90. 
Uh, see, th that would be 105 degrees here. So the cosine value is negative. See, it's, there's the negative 0.2588. Okay, that would be the function value right there. So I didn't have to use just exactly these values. I could use any angles. I just kind of spaced them out and did every 30 degrees, and you can get a really good idea what the graphs look like then. So, so that's the um, how what the sine and cosine graphs look like in degrees, and that's the end of the tutorial.